Hello everyone. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video. Uh, it's going to be kind of a series um, over basically how to reinforce and reshape um, a fiberglass stock. Now this is going to be more specific to the M14, M1A series of rifles. Um, I've done this before. This is actually the second stock I've done. Uh, the first one I did for myself. I just reinforced it, but I'll go over that. Um, but I just kind of want to start it off with, um, you know, kind of where to begin. So this is, I got two stocks this time to do. Um, this is kind of what you start with or what I started with. Um, I picked this stock up from, uh, you know, offline for about 20 bucks and you can see, you know, the metal hardware is pretty rough. Um, you know, it's got rust, it's got corrosion, but, you know, that being said, the stock itself is really good. The fiberglass, you know, these are fiberglass GI stocks, uh, and if you are unsure on whether or not the stock you're thinking of reinforcing is a fiberglass stock, um, they'll typically have the cutout for them already done, unless it's an older stock that it's been filled in, but at any rate, you're able to tell if that's been filled in. If it's got the selector cut, then it's it's a GI fiberglass stock. Uh, they did come checkered and uncheckered. Uh, just make sure that you look it over before you buy a stock. And I may I may do a video a video kind of explaining what to look for if you're shopping in person. I bought these online, so there was no in person shopping or anything like that. Um, just buy from a reputable source. Um, but these, both of these stocks were about $40 uh, as they sat. Um, so as far as that goes, um, this one here, I'm doing kind of a little more involved work on. Like I said, the first one that I did, I reinforced it. I filled in the selector cutout, and that was about it. It, it stayed you know, pretty standard stock. I did a textured finish to it, camo painted it, and so far it's been outstanding. Um, I would say, honestly, outside of having a McMillan or some kind of chassis, uh, these are probably going to be one of your best options. Um, I'm actually swapping, the, I'm building this one up for this rifle, uh, which is a rifle I featured in a previous video that I've had built up. I've made a couple changes to it since then. I uh, put the compensator back on it just to help with um, getting to watch vapor trails and uh, get better follow-up shots, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm building this stock up for this rifle because I had it in a wood stock that um, it just, it was, it didn't feel right, honestly. After messing around with it for enough time, I'm kind of over the wood stocks. Uh, I want to shoot this rifle in all all weather conditions and um, different you know types of weather, different weather and different scenarios that the uh, benefits of a fiberglass stock really stand out in. I'm not shooting it in any CMP style matches, so I don't need it to stay the uh, traditional profile or anything like that. So I could really kind of have some creative influence with this. Um, now there are plenty of people who have changed out these fiberglass stocks, you know, they'll cut off the back here, um, and, at, you know, they'll attach, uh, typically a shotgun adapter, um, so that they can put an AR style stock on it. Um, I'm undecided what I'm going to do with this stock. I may, I may do that to this one, but I'm kind of on the fence on it. Um, but for this rifle, I kind of wanted to do something a little more traditional, but, almost a cross between an M40 and a more like a hunting style stock. Something comfortable, but, um, you know, more or less traditional. I just, I do like the feel of a traditional stock. It's nothing against pistol grips. I'm not a FUD or anything dumb like that. Uh, it, it's just a, uh, about the feel of it. So what I've done, and this is only the first step, um, I've built up as you can see, a lot of areas. The forearm, uh, mostly, I just kind of flattened the f bottom of the forearm. I used the uh, I used body filler, uh, like for automotive work, 
and I flattened the form and widened it a little bit at the bottom so it's a little more comfortable. Um, it's not quite an M40 profile, but it's just more about what felt comfortable. Um, I did change the pistol grip area a fair amount. Uh, I added the finger grooves. I gave it kind of a palm swell, widened it up. Um, and then the, as you can see, the big thing is I added this cheek riser to it. I mean, and you can see it's not a super substantial increase, maybe about half an inch, but it's enough that it definitely feels more comfortable. Um, you know, going to this side. Now you'll see like there are little areas like here where I need to kind of finish out sanding and um, maybe doing a little spot filling. But overall, the majority of the sculpting is done. Um, you know, I give it a more defined line here um, just to give it kind of that more traditional look. Um, but now this here, this is something that just about anybody can do. I mean, honestly, you know, with enough layers of body filler uh, or, or whatever material you're going to use, you can build up and reshape almost any stock. This will work with... Um, really any type. Now, I don't recommend doing the work that I'm doing to this on a plastic stock. I mean, a lot of the M1As come with uh, the Springfield Armory plastic stock. I don't recommend doing that. I, I've never reinforced those myself, but I've read enough accounts of them and spoke to enough people who've tried it, and they all get mixed results. Sometimes they get a rifle that shoots well, Sometimes they make it, it, overall the the overwhelming majority of them have all said the same thing, and that's that uh, the amount of work they put in did not even remotely match up with uh, the uh, you know the results. They put in way more effort than the results got out of it. The fiberglass stocks, however, can be reinforced, uh, and it's a very common thing to do. Um, now there's plenty of different ways to do it. Some people add carbon fiber or add carbon fiber reinforcement to them. Um, that's a really good method and it's extremely lightweight. I highly recommend that method. Um, but I'm acting with more limited materials. I've kind of wanted to, sp you know, spend as little money as possible doing this just to show, you know, how nice of a stock you can get if you're just willing to put in a little more work. And now, granted, it is more work but at less cost. Um, so like I said, this is not even, a, you know, none of this is necessary to making a good stock. Um, but this is all something I wanted to do for mine. You can do whatever you want. You know, you can add a pistol grip to it. Uh, you could cut off the back of it and make it almost like an E2 style stock just by adding, you know, a, a, the pistol grip and different stock area you can add a, do whatever you want um as far as what the next steps are going to be and i'm going to outline each step of the process unfortunately i cannot show actually doing it i don't have a way to film that uh reliably but i will go step by step this will be a multi-part series um but the next step is going to be to fiberglass over this for the rigidity um, now I used, like I said, I did use uh, standard, you know, automotive body filler, just Bondo. Um, it wasn't my first choice. It's just what Napa had. Um, I was actually looking for stuff and I, the stuff I really wanted to use is called fiber fill. Um, it's actually, last time I saw it, it was almost green in color. Um, it's almost like a fiberglass infused type bondo it's very similar to it very stringy and a lot easier to sculpt now it's harder to smooth out as far as you know getting a smooth you know getting it to lay smoothly you're going to have to do more sanding but it is a better it's a better product for this kind of work you'll probably be able to do this in a lot less steps so you might save some sanding in the long run um but now it is it is a messy process. I don't recommend doing this, you know, in your nice carpeted living room. It is a highly messy process. 
Um, this is just kind of my little workbench that I've been using. And these are some of the tools you'll use, um, you know, rubber sanding block. I've been using this, you know, just cheap 50 grit sandpaper from Harbor Freight. It's actually been working out pretty well. Um, a rasp for sculpting and knocking off the big stuff. These things are invaluable. This saves a lot of work. Um, you know, another half round file just to kind of, you know, do what the rasp does, but not quite as aggressively. And then this right here, uh, this pick, I actually, to get this lip, you know, this nice clean lip, I just wrap sandpaper around this and, you know, I just go, I use this almost as a sanding block. So, you know, you can do that with really any type of stock. But as you can see, very dusty process. I'm, I'm doing this in an area, that, in an open area that um, is really easy to sweep, you know, concrete floor and all that. So the next step, like I said, for rigidity and durability is going to be to fiberglass, put a layer of fiberglass over this. So I have made it kind of undersized. A lot of this stuff is going to be um, covered up. So it will be waterproof. It will be weatherproof. It's going to be very durable. It does add some weight. You know, Bondo is not a super light material. So this is going to weigh more than just the stripped fiberglass stock. That's fine. For the purposes of this rifle, I don't mind a little bit of extra weight, especially at the back. That actually kind of helps having a little more uh, rear weight balance just to help with some of the, you know, some of the weight shift. Um, this right here, is, and now after I do that, uh, the next step after that is going to be to fill in the selector, uh, the selector cutout, and to add the forearm reinforcing which to do that now these fiberglass stocks have a nice flat channel in there to reinforce it i'm actually going to bed in this aluminum plate now this is just a piece of um, bar stock that i got from uh, i think it was menards or whatever but they, just about any hardware store sells it um, now i notched out the you know this notch here that is actually for the op rod guide to sit into um, now fiber you know car uh, carbon fiber will lay flatter but this whole bar just sits nice and flat down in there uh, and you know your op rod guide goes into here uh, that way it doesn't make any contact with anything uh, and this really right here by itself will stiffen up the forearm quite a bit um, now I do ask also add uh, side reinforcings. There's enough room in there for some quarter inch wide bar stock that you don't have to shave down. You literally just cut it, um, you know, get a rough texture to it and then epoxy it in. And I'll show, I'll show what that looks like after I do it. Um, this piece here though took a bit of work. You'll definitely want to fit it. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of channeled out. It's got like a curve to it. Um, I actually sanded that out. I routed that out um, with like a drum sander bit that goes into a drill uh, to make short work of it. Make sure when you, uh, you know, when you, um, when you're fitting everything to clearance it, make sure you clearance it before you bed it in. I made the mistake on my first stock. Uh, that I reinforced of bedding this piece in. Now I notched out, I put the notch in there, but I bedded this plate in before I ever clearanced it. And I had to go in with a Dremel and literally just bit by bit route it out, pull the op rod back and see, you know, where the op rod mark was. It was, it took a lot longer than it should have. That was a mistake that I made the first time around that I decided not to make this time. Um, you can just set this into the forearm, put your action in, pull the op rod back, and it'll mark where you need to route out. It will not hurt the steel of the op rod because this is aluminum. It just puts like a silver streak on it. Um, and and it's, it's not too difficult. Like I said, it's, I, all the tools I've used for this, I got at Harbor Freight. It, it's not precision bodywork or anything like that. 
um, any mistake you make is pretty easy to fix. It's really actually harder to screw it up than you'd think. Uh, now the perk of if you're going to do this for a uh, M1A with the factory the factory plastic stock is that all of your hardware for the most part is going to fit directly. Um, so you can reuse your front uh, your front sling attachment, your rear sling attachment. Um, now on, on your fiberglass stock, you know you'll still have the metal front band, and there may be a bit of grinding that it takes to get that off. You may have to use some force, um, but you can use obviously your metal uh, front band from the uh, the plastic stock, uh, and then there's no stock liner to worry about in these fiberglass stocks. So, you know, that makes for a pretty, uh, pretty uh, solid buildup. The butt plate is a standard butt plate. There is a, it's not a wood screw in here. Um, it's actually going to be a, uh, like a square nut and, uh, you know, more of a machine thread like it is down here. Uh, here, I'll show you. Forgive the workbench, it's a bit messy where I've done a full teardown. There we go. Say, this is actually a new screw assembly, and a new screw and nut assembly I got uh, when I bought the stocks. But that's what your top screw is going to look like in the fiberglass stocks. That's going to be really the biggest difference between the, uh, the plastic stock hardware and the fiberglass stock hardware. Otherwise, they're almost identical. It's really hard to tell the difference between them. Um, as far as accuracy goes, once you stiffen these things up, and like I said, I've done one of these already. I've shot it multiple, you know, multiple times. Uh, I ran it and I've ran that rifle in the competition actually. And so far, it, it's blown me away with how much of an improvement it is. I mean, it is not only a really cool project that you can personalize any way you want, um, but it, honestly, it, it kind of makes more sense to me to do this um, than to buy, especially if you want to learn how to bed these rifles, I would rather do it on this than buy a Macmillan stock and try to figure out how to bed it on that. Uh, if you screw this up, you know, this is a good practice stock because if you screw this up in your bedding, you're out of $20 stock. You know, um, if you screw up a Macmillan, you know, you're, you're out a lot more, about six, seven hundred. Um, you know, other features I'm going to add to this stock uh, in coming videos. Uh, I am going to, I've already filled in the rear sling swivel and obviously the uh, mounting point for the front sling swivel. Now don't block up that hole there, um, that vents excess gas. So you will want to leave that open. Um, but I filled in the sling swivel points because I'm actually going to put QD cups into this stock, modernize a little bit. Uh, as far as a bipod mount, I'm going to just do a standard um, uh, sling swivel stud. Uh, for like a Harris bipod, something a little cleaner than one of the Sadlack rails. I, I have the Sadlack rails on a couple different stocks. I really like them, but I just want to do something a little different on this one. Um, but yeah, uh, say uh, if this is if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask. Um, you know, sorry for the amateur video quality, but uh, I've looked all over and nobody is uh, nobody's posting any videos of how to do this kind of stuff. So I'll be glad to kind of show along. And if you have any questions about any of the process, let me know. And uh, I'll try to, I'll try to get to that in future videos. Um, but uh, like I said, the next step is going to be to fiberglass over this. And then once I get to actually doing the reinforcing bit of it, um, you know, and filling in stuff like the selector cutout, I'll, I'll show how I do that process. Um, but thank you for watching. Um, you know, drop a like or, uh, you know, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. All right.